So power cuts have become our reality, and this has put the spotlight on fast-tracking renewable energy projects. Dr. Ritabile Milamo is a woman who knows a thing or two about the green economy and energy sectors. Uh, she's been appointed CEO of the South African Photovoltaic Industry Association. Uh, Dr. Milamo also has vast experience in the clean technology solutions and believes solar projects could create jobs, albeit at a cost. Let's bring in Dr. Milamo to hear more about her plans and her vision. Uh, doctor, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. First of all, congratulations on your appointment as the CEO of the South African Photovoltaic Industry Association. Good afternoon and good afternoon to your viewers and thank you very much for inviting me and uh, for that hearty congratulations. Okay, so we are all screaming and kicking for energy security in South Africa. What part can solar play in achieving that? Um, thank you. Um, I think uh, solar has a critical role to play in powering the South Africa's and the Africa's uh, energy security. Um, let me start by indicating that uh, we as the South African, uh, South African country, the SADAC region, and most of the African continent are blessed with uh, this immense uh, resource. And uh, at Sapphire and all other industry players and stakeholders, ours is to ensure that uh, this uh, freely available resource is exploited to the best of their ability. So I'm really excited to be uh, joining uh, this uh, sector as and uh, Savia specifically as it enters its second decade uh, to ensure that we do grow the sector and uh, with the sector we grow our job creation potential. So I'm really, really excited to be here, cautiously so, because I understand that there is quite a lot of work that needs to be done. Yeah, when you talk about a lot of work that has to be done, are you happy with the present regulations at the present uh, at the moment? Do you think we're heading in the right direction and moving fast enough forward? Uh, let me commend government because um, it has been coming to the party recently. Uh, there are things that can be done better. Um, I think uh, uh, the various government uh, departments uh, that uh, play a critical role in ensuring that uh, like solar is as deployed or renewable energy in general are deployed. I can do a lot more in collaborating, for instance, DMRE and the DTIC can collaborate a lot more. But we are encouraged by some of the developments that have come up uh, around the IPP office, making sure that uh, they facilitate uh, those conversations between the various government departments and the independent power producers to make sure that at least at the utility scale, uh, some of the projects that have been uh, pending for a while come to a financial close uh, later this year, and uh, both uh, around bid window five, but also the risk mitigation uh, round. So I think uh, there is no silver bullet. Uh, there are no quick solutions uh, that uh, load shedding might be with us for a little bit longer. But uh, renewables uh, in general and solar PV specifically is one of the solutions that can be deployed uh, quite quickly. And quite quickly here, we're talking about two to three years at utility scale. But there are opportunities uh, across the value chain. Uh, the, the one good thing about solar energy and solar PV specifically is that it can be deployed across different market segments. Um, utility, as we know it uh, through the IPPs, but there's huge potential uh, for commercial and industrial applications that have been enabled by uh, the amendment to Schedule 2 of the Electricity Regulation Act. But as we know, there are also huge opportunity to deploy uh, solar PV at residential level. And, and that's where, at Sabia, we believe uh, there are, there's a great potential to create uh, the much needed jobs. Mm. Uh, 100%. Obviously, you can... Are you, sorry, Doctor, when you look at uh, residential level and you look at the people that can afford uh, to actually put up, uh, you know, the, the solar power in their homes, those are the people that are actually, you know, paying a lot to ESCOM. ESCOM needs the finance. It's, it's almost uh, 
again, my favorite phrase, a rock and a hard place in terms of, you know, from a, mm. a power generation going forward, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, I think uh, what, what we encourage most of the customers to do is not to uh, deflect completely from uh, the ESCOM's greed, um, to, to um, continue to be connected to the greed so that they can uh, utilize uh, 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 electricity from the grid when the sun is not shining. Uh, and of course, uh, those that can afford uh, battery storage are able to, um, you know, uh, survive load shedding ramps. But uh, what we're saying is that uh, together with municipalities and ESCOM, we, we, we need to come with interim solutions. As you may have heard, uh, there is about uh, six, about 6,000 megawatts, um, a, a bit of a shortage in capacity. And so all the resources that need to be deployed, whether it's residential, commercial, industrial, need to be brought to the party to ensure that we at least survive the, the immediate crisis. Mm. But we prime ourselves to grow in, in three to four years' time to, to really uh, begin to uh, generate excess capacity. Now, Doctor, you're saying that uh, the adoption of solar will create jobs, albeit at a cost. Can you please expand on that? So I think uh, what that meant was that uh, there they are socioeconomic uh, development imperatives that government has uh, committed to. And uh, part of that requires that some of the value chain, the solar PV value chain, be localized, the production and the manufacturing be localized. Uh, what that could potentially mean is that uh, it might be slightly more expensive to source uh, components uh, locally. But that uh, comes with uh, socioeconomic benefits and that will be able to create the much needed jobs and perhaps allow for more ownership of the previously marginalized groups. Uh, what that means is it's going to be slightly more expensive, uh, and we understand that uh, this will might not be an immediate solution because uh, we need a power now. But in two to three years, uh, we need to bolster our when we bolster our local uh, content and local manufacturing. It would mean that uh, we we need to strike a very delicate balance between. Uh, uh, what the ultimate cost of electricity will be, um, factoring all the the, 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 the the costs related to uh, sourcing components locally and, and, and what it, it could have been if uh, some of these components were sourced uh, internationally. So uh, with that said, I, I do believe that uh, uh, renewable energy uh, power will still remain are cheaper than other other sources that have been pursued in the country. And just lastly, as an association, are you uh, speaking with uh, the municipalities? I'm talking on a local level here because, you know, that, that for me would be my biggest worry. Are you speaking with municipalities to allow maybe your, the smaller producers to start uh, exporting power to municipalities? Absolutely, absolutely. One of the programs and the initiatives that Savia has pursued over the years is to help uh, uh, the municipalities uh, with uh, uh, quality uh, installation and vetting of, uh, of, of, of these installation. We have a program uh, called the PV Green Card that ensures that those that install PV uh, systems are certified and the systems that are installed uh, at households are safe, are safe and reliable. Uh, but what one of the other activities that Sabvia will strengthen efforts in is to ensure that municipalities that currently do not allow uh, for installations of solar PVs because they don't have regulations and rules in place or even tariffs, uh, fast track that process uh, so that it's not illegal to uh, have a system uh, installed on your rooftop. Uh, some of the municipalities, including some in Houding, still do not have those uh, rules and regulations and tariffs in place, which makes it, I mean, a tad illegal for somebody to install a solar system on their rooftop. But understandably, that is still 
people are going on and installing these systems anyway because people, uh, there is a need to really um, survive this current crisis, the low shedding. Uh, people's lives and businesses still need to go on. So an ideal case would be for all municipalities in the country to have uh, their rules and regulations in place to allow for embedded generation. And what that does, it opens a whole lot of job opportunities for uh, uh, installers and, 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 and increased jobs around the small scale embedded generation. Okay. Uh, Dr. Retabile Melamo, thank you so much. CEO of the South African Photovoltaic Industry Association. We hope to see those IPPs coming online sooner rather than later.